Hey, grade eights, it's lesson 1.1 today. We are going to look at our opening story. We're gonna take a look at uh, what the Black Death is. We're gonna see some gruesome pictures of the Black Death too. And then you will have some time to work on your vocabulary. So stick around and let's learn something. All right, lesson 1.1 of uh, Unit 1, Origins of a Western Worldview. This is, like I mentioned, Chapter 1, Times of Change. We're going to start with our opening story. And I want you to imagine the year is 1347, so a long time ago. A ship arrives in Messina, which is a city on the island of Sicily off the south coast of uh, Italy. And the ship sailed into the busy harbor. It had come from ports on the eastern Mediterranean where it took on a cargo of spices and other goods. When the ship landed, the dock workers were surprised to see sick sailors staggering onto the shore. Everywhere on the deck of the ship lay dead or dying sailors. They had black and purplish blotches on their skin and strange egg-shaped swellings in their armpits. Ouch. The dying were coughing, moaning, and they were vomiting blood. Within a few days, most of the sailors were dead. People who cared for them also developed the same terrible symptoms. Soon, people all over the city began to fall ill and die. The disease that the sailors had brought was the Black Death or the Bubonic Plague. They had caught it in the eastern seaports they visited. The Black Death was spread by fleas on the rats that lived in the urban areas and on board ships. There was no cure for the disease at the time, and over the next two years, it spread all over Europe. About one-third to one-half of the people in Europe, so about 25 million people, some even say a lot more, eventually died of the Black Death. Some villages and towns were completely wiped out. The opening story and this chapter is going to help us to answer this question. In what ways can changing social structures affect a society's world view? There are a few vocabulary words that you are going to be responsible, and you'll have some time later to do these. Feudalism, hierarchy, allegiance, manners, free man, serfs, monastery, journeyman, and sumptuary laws. That's a tough one for some people to say. All right, so let's talk about the Black Death. The Black Death was also known as the bubonic plague. Uh, that was the main plague that was affecting Europe uh, at the end of the Middle Ages. So in, uh, in our examples here, around 1347, um, that was our opening story. Uh, so that's when it took place. And it was brought to Europe on merchant ships that were coming from the eastern ports that were in the Black Sea. Um, and it followed the trade routes that existed in Europe. So definitely some areas got hit harder than others. And the opening story had our dead and dying sailors on board. And um, that then uh, infected other people that were dealing with them and trying to help them. Um, and uh, it just kind of spread throughout Europe that way. And in total, estimates are that it came back at least six more times uh, by the time it was kind of gotten rid of and died out in 1410. And the estimates for the deaths that took place, somewhere between a third to half of uh, the people in all of Europe. So approximately 25 million people, some will say more, uh, but usually that's a, that's a pretty good estimate. And you can see in the uh, graphic that's here, um, the different years where it hit different parts of Europe. Um, for a time when there was no modern technology or transportation, then this you can see that this spread actually fast without having that modern technology and transportation. When you compare it to what COVID-19 has done and how fast that has spread, the Black Death followed similar paths um, to infect all of Europe. So how did it spread? Well, we saw in the opening story um, that it came on these trading ships. Well, one very popular theory is that there was a group of Tartars and they were attra uh, attracting, attacking a trading post in the city of Kaffa. And there, this trading post, they sealed in this trading post um, and they were trying to starve the people out. And uh, so they, they, they laid siege to this trading post. Well. 
within the trading post, those people that were there were dying. So what the people inside did is they loaded those dead bodies onto catapults and they threw them over the city walls and they catapulted them and using them kind of like um, kind of like uh, ammunition. And when these dead bodies, when they they went over the the walls, it would hit the Tartars and um, the fleas that were on these bodies would bite them. And then when they retreated and when they made their way back to their ships and back to different trading posts, uh, they were infected with the with the bubonic plague, with the Black Death. And the people that were being infected, they had no idea how this was happening. So yeah, okay, a flea bites you, you scratch and, and you go and you go on from there and then it gets transferred to humans and it spread really, really fast that way. When we talk about the Black Death, we're talking about the bubonic plague, but there's two other forms. There's other plagues uh, that existed, but our main one is the bubonic plague and it actually... Uh, kills 75% of the people that are infected by it. So it has a really high death rate. And it took a path um, to throughout Europe that follows the trade routes of that time. Um, so it's going to hit Italy first. Why does it hit Italy first? Well, it hits Italy first because as we are going to see in the next chapter, Italy is the central hub for trade in Europe during this time. So it was natural that the Italians are going to get hit first. And then it follows its trade route. So it, it makes its way from Asia through the ports of the Black Sea into southern Italy. And then everybody from northern Europe is coming down to Italy to get these goods that are being traded. So then they get attacked, they get bit, they get infected, and they make their way back. And this uh, plague eventually makes its way through all of uh, Europe, with the exception of pockets here and there that are sparred uh, from major, major catastrophe. So you can see here on this graphic, the different colors are, um, are, are what's representing for the Black Death. And you see the date lines there. So... The worst of this plague happened in 1347 to about 1351. This is where most of the people are going to be infected by this Black Death. And the estimates that I said earlier were about 25 million people. And you can see here the path that it takes on this uh, graphic that's taking place. And you can see there are some spots that are, you know, relatively not hit they're there they are sparred or spared uh from the from the black death uh for various reasons reasons that we'll get into maybe a little bit later uh in this lesson or later in the chapter but you can see there like that's a fast moving that's a fast moving uh disease that's taking place when you compare that to COVID-19, COVID-19 spread really really fast because of modern transportation technologies planes, cruise ships, um, just traveling over the borders and things like that, very easily, very common. So the Black uh, Death kind of would follow the same speed uh, considering the technology that they had back then. It was moving pretty fast. Now I'm going to warn you, this next slide is going to be kind of ugly. You are going to see two pictures of uh, people infected with the uh, bubonic plague. So I'm just giving you warning right now. I am about to click over to the next one. So here are your symptoms and you can see here on the pictures. You will have enlarged lymph nodes and we have lymph nodes all over our body, in our armpits, in our groin, in our neck. Um, these lymph nodes are there. Naturally, lymph nodes can swell they can enlarge it means your body is fighting off some sort of infection and that's the body's way of of fighting it now without getting into too much scientific and medical detail that's very common uh, you will at some point in your life feel an enlarged lymph node it's a very scary uh, thing that happens but it's very common if you haven't felt these already this is just your body's way of fighting off some sort of infection but the lymph node that you see here in the first picture on the top left that's not what it's supposed to look like. You shouldn't see that. That is the Black Death. That's the bubonic plague. You will also get a high fever. 
You'll become nauseous. And with that, you'll vomit. Your joints will ache. And the tips of your fingers will also and their toes will also start to die off and turn black like the gentleman that is found here in the bottom left hand picture. Once you get this, if you don't get medical attention fast enough, you will probably last about four days before you die. That's kind of scary. It's a really scary thought. But if you take a look uh, at these pictures, it's a scary thought. Because if you're looking at these pictures, these are pictures that are in color. These are pictures that are just recently taken within the last few years. The Black Death, the bubonic plague is not gone. Okay, they find this uh, still currently today. Um, we have it in, sometimes hunters will find it um, in different parts of the world. Even here in Canada, uh, just recently in the news, uh, it was found in uh, remote parts of China. It doesn't go away and it never has gone away but uh, we have modern medicine. So these pictures were taken of people who have it and uh, they are uh, used to, ex uh, to show you what it actually looks like. So kind of scary. Why did this happen? Well, it's the 1300s. How was science in the 1300s? Wasn't that good, right? Wasn't that advanced? So they didn't really know exactly um, what was spreading this disease. They had no clue that had everything to do with cleanliness. The rats and the fleas, they would they would live amongst the people. The fleas would bite the people, the infected fleas, and that would pass on this disease, and people didn't really understand that. So what did they do? They started looking for explanations about the spread of this disease. And they're like the first bullet here says, some were convinced that it was the movement of the planets. So in this time period, in the late 1340s, uh, it just so happened that Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars, they were kind of all lined up together. And people were, they, they knew about the planets, and they were saying, oh, that this is because of that alignment with the planets. They knew about the movement. Not everybody actually fully understood how and why they moved. That wasn't until a little bit later in history that uh, they found that out. But it made sense to them at the time this made sense another thing that made sense to them uh, because as we are going to find out later on in this chapter people during this period of time were extremely religious and they looked to the church for all of their answers similar to what many of us do today but they didn't have that science backing so they saw the plague as a punishment from god god was punishing people for the lifestyles that they were living. If religion is your top priority and it's your it's your it's your go-to in life, this is going to make sense. This is a punishment sent from God. Others believed that the devil was involved. So still from a from a religious point of view, they're saying that yeah, no, the devil is doing this. This is what the devil is causing. Others are going to say this is some sort of magic that is uh, taking place. Others believe that they could purify their air and they could keep the plague away by using incense. So they would burn this incense. And the thing was, it actually worked. Like this incense did work. So they believe that they were burning something special and this was curing them of the Black Death. The reason it worked is because that incense kept the fleas away. The smoke killed the fleas. And the rats don't want to be around anything that smells kind of clean and anything that's purified. So they didn't know that it was pushing these two rodents and, and, and these bugs away, but they just believed that this was cleansing their house of the Black Death, which kind of it was, I guess, but what it was really doing was just keeping the, the fleas and the rats away. And unfortunately, there were still others who blamed cultural groups and ethnic groups of uh, of this black death. So if you were of a different cultural group, if you were of a different ethnic group, then you were blaming other ethnic groups or you were blaming other cultures for the spread of these uh, of this disease, um, which is very sad and uh, expected of human behavior uh, back then because we still do this today in 2020. We're still blaming cultural groups and we're still blaming ethnic groups that are different than our own for all of the world's problems that exist. It existed back then, it exists today. We need to do a better 
uh, job of, of handling that. So that's something that we should all strive to do is, is to make sure that doesn't happen. But this is one of the explanations that were being uh, laid on to the Black Death. Is it gone? It's not gone. Okay, we have had uh, reports that hunters have it. Uh, I told you earlier in this lesson that it's been found in isolated parts of China. Um, it was also found back in 2020 in the early spring, I think. Uh, there was a report of some hunters in California getting the bubonic plagues. You know, they were bit by whatever they were bit and um, they, they came down with it. And it's roughly about 3,000 people a year that do get this. Um, so this is not, if you see this in the news, and you will see this in the news, I mean, it's not the, this next pandemic that is coming our way. Um, this, is, this hasn't gone away. Like I said, about 3,000 people a year do get infected with the bubonic plague. So why isn't it such a big deal? Well, the simple answer is we have antibiotics. So if, like I mentioned earlier, if you can catch it in time, if you can get medical attention in time, they will give you the uh, antibiotics to uh, fight that and to combat that. So it is a super scary thing. You can definitely die from it. And if you don't get medical help, you will die from it. Like it says, uh, like I said earlier, 75% of the people do get, uh, who get it will die if they don't get the proper medical attention needed to fight it. There's a really good question in the book. And it says, what if half the people in Canada suddenly died of a terrible disease. How do you think this would affect society? Well, we don't have to even look at half of Canada's population dying to see what a disease would do to Canada. We can see what COVID-19 has done to Canadian society. We see how it questions beliefs, behavior, and values. Definitely people are looking for answers. COVID-19 has made us more cautious. COVID-19 has made us rely on science to a greater value. We are definitely in the lockdown of the spring of 2020, uh, the quarantine, we definitely have spent a lot more time with loved ones, with our, with our parents, with our siblings. And we saw that it did provide or did create huge problems for our economy and our society. People were laid off, uh, whether temporarily or permanently, people were laid off. And it had it did create and still is creating problems for our society. Schools were canceled in the spring of 2020. We started the fall 2020 term. Uh, approximately 27, I think it was about 27%, so close, approximately 30% of our students are choosing to do remote learning, online learning. So that's changing our society. So the question says, well, what if half the people died? Well, we don't have to even think about half the people dying. We have the introduction of the COVID-19 disease, and we can see the effects that it is having on our society. So we don't even have to think about if half the people died, we can see it right now. All right, I want you to head over to your OneNote notebook. Uh, we are going to be working on the vocabulary and there will be a few videos for you to watch uh, after this as well.